Now, his music is as caustic, satirical, and politically conscious as ever, and his latest release has not disappointed in this regard. The award-winning hip-hop artist Fowles has collaborated with another Nigerian rapper known as Vector to produce a new single that's backgrounded by the grand narrative of a burning domestic issue, the 2023 presidential election and how it's perceived to have been conducted. The track is titled Yakubu. And not surprisingly, it hits out at the Electoral Commission INEC for what the two rappers say are the inadequacies of the recently concluded ballot. But bearing in mind that Fowles' hit song, This Is Nigeria, was banned from the airwaves in 2018 by the regulator, the National Broadcasting Commission, which described it as vulgar and unfit for broadcast, what is likely to be the fate of this new track that's already gone viral. Take a listen. This one is not. You save the talk when we protest the shot. Make we carry PVC, make we see where things go up. Suddenly, it's Kata, area boy, Tijagba, Asole, Tijagba, Olokba, the guy down. You are you, the number, the potter, the shot down. You drop us, the lamba, somebody, the hacker. And we just uh, wanted to give you a brief tease there of the new politically charged song by Fowles and Vector titled Yakubu. And for more on this, I'm joined now from our studios in London by the multi-award winning artist, Folarin Falanor, better known as Fowles. Fowles, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, always a pleasure to see you and to have you on the program. Uh, tell us more about the theme and the inspiration behind this latest song, Yakubu, that you've just released with Vector. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, it, <clears throat> excuse me. As you said, you know, pretty much um, just an account of events um, as they've transpired in the last couple of couple of months. Um, you know, um, you know, with the entire uh, episode with the elections and everything as they've played out. Um, that's pretty much what it is. It's self-explanatory. You know, if you listen to the record, you follow the story from beginning to end. Even if you weren't uh, present when all these things were happening, um, you know, you'll be able to, just by listening and, and watching this video, to have a clear uh, or, or, or a brief summary of uh, events as they transpired. And that's what we we're trying to achieve with the record. And uh, you, you have taken to social media to express your dissatisfaction with the emergence of Bola Tinubu as the president-elect. You also said that the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Samuelu, was not elected but selected himself. Tell us why the process by which they emerged as winners has incurred your displeasure. Um, to say the least, the rules and regulations that were supposed to guide these elections were not applied, quite simply. Um, um, you know, the ANEC chairman himself, prior to the elections, had come out and released these uh, uh, regulations and said, you know, this is the way we are going to run these elections. And then by the time that these elections were then happening, suddenly, you know, you know we're seeing this process that is so not transparent and exactly the opposite of what you said it was going to be. And, um, you know, of course, people are going to raise eyebrows. Of course, everyone is going to be like, what is going on? So, um, you know, that, that was pretty much, you know, how it happened. And it was clear from all that that there was some foul play involved. It's, it's interesting, Fals, that less than a year ago, you were publicly backing INEX voter registration drive, headlining free concerts, organized in part by the same INEC that's now fallen out of your favor. And of course, at one of those concerts, you had INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu saying, and I quote, I assure you that your vote will count, unquote, but you don't believe but your vote has counted, do you? <laughs> I, I, I definitely do not. I, <laughs> I definitely do not. Uh, mine, as well as millions of other Nigerians who trooped out to vote 
um, on those days. And it's very sad. It's very sad. Um, it's very terrible to see that everyone is being subjected to this. And it's some level of torture, if you like, because you're, you're almost toying with our feelings and with our future. And this is no joke in any way. And, you know, this man, like you said, during all these events and all these uh, pre-election events had come and said, look, I assure you this is going to happen and it's going to be free and fair. And everyone had so much faith going into this, uh, going into these elections. And it was deeply, deeply disappointing the way everything turned out. So, so let me ask you this. I mean, what were you expecting this election to deliver? I mean, were you hoping to see a new Nigerian political identity emerge from it? Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and I think we can see that there's been, there's been a bit of a trajectory. Um, there's been something brewing just within the polity, um, you know, especially among the young people. And... You know, as we know, as statistics tell us, the young people make the bulk of our population. And that has come to show, you know, in just the way that things have played out. And leading up to these elections, everyone could see that there was a momentum. There was a, there was a momentum that was brewing. And it, it wasn't really revolving around any particular personality in particular. It was uh, more about, look... We're going into the, uh, this process again, and what we would like to achieve is being able to choose this time around. What has happened over time? And, you know, this entire thing that's happening now is not new to us. <laughs> it's what is normally expected. You know, they come and they do this wuru wuru, and people's votes don't count. And even coming into this, uh, these elections, most people are saying, oh, our votes wouldn't count because that's the way they do it normally. We'll go there, we'll waste our time, they will just come, and they will do what they want to do. So everyone was feeling hopeful that this time around, it wouldn't be business as usual. You know, everyone was hoping that we would come, we would vote, and that our votes would count. And I, I couldn't even believe what I was seeing, you know, even as the elections were happening. People were determined. It was raining cats and dogs. People stood in the rain. It was, the, the sun was was a furnace, you know, uh, earlier in the day. People stood and people made sure that they voted, you know, because everyone wanted to see something different this time around. And like I said earlier on, it was just deeply, deeply disappointing, very heartbreaking, terribly heartbreaking, to say the least, the way everything played out. And presumably, that is, it is that spirit of disappointment that you've captured in your new uh, song because I, I noticed that it's clearly not a song designed to help people rise above all the political sort of sectionalism and you know frustrations and so on I mean it doesn't sound like it's helping you know aiming to help people find the best way to move forward from this election music music is a medium of expression it's an expression of rage. It's an expression of frustration. It's an expression of anger. It's, it's fury. It's, this is the way that we're feeling. And I'm, there's absolutely nothing I'm saying on this record, or Vector is saying on this record, that hasn't occurred. It's not, we're not bringing, we're not, we're not fabricating facts. We're not making things up. We're not painting a scenario that did not occur. We're telling, I'm telling you things as they happened. You know, we, we went out there, we voted, and suddenly everything was scattered before our very eyes. And absolutely nothing was done about that. And even upon all the numerous, numerous cases of violence that we witnessed, upon all the very shoddy and shabby looking uh, 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 manipulated results that we saw with our very eyes, the INEC chairman still went on to declare a winner. And as for the presidential election, <laughs> uh, uh, as, as the presidential election is concerned, in the dead of the night, you know. So, I mean, it, it, it was all just um, a big mess. It was all a big mess. And, and, and I noticed that you use quite a bit of Yoruba language in, in the song, as well as, of course, pidgin and English. Is that aimed at 
infusing the color i mean the, the song with color invigorating it with drama or is there a deeper perhaps more political reason i'm a yoruba speaker myself um, i'm a pigeon speaker myself um, these are nigerian languages i stay i i always aim to stay as true to myself as possible um, in every way that I express my art. And, you know, that pretty much is what that was. You know, I always express both in English and, you know, my native languages, um, you know, with, with majority of my records. And um, majority of the song is in English anyway. So it's, it's and that, I think that's why everyone instantly resonated with it because they can clearly understand what's, what's happening in there. And even the parts that are in Yoruba, you know, because you have context, uh, of, of the entire record, you can pretty much figure out what I'm saying, you know, in those parts as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I've listened to, to it and I could pretty much make out, I mean, you're right there, um, everything that you were saying. But, but what makes you express your art politically the way that you do? I feel, I feel very strongly about everything that happens around me. You know, I, there's no way that I exist in such an environment and not speak about it. I'm deeply, deeply inspired by happenings around me. You know, we make songs, like I said earlier, music is a mode of expression. Um, we make songs about things that happen to us, things that we would want to see or things that we imagine um, would happen. Um, in this case, these are things, these are happenings that I'm witnessing on a daily basis. And I will always speak about these happenings. It didn't start today, it didn't start yesterday, and it will not stop. <laughs> I will continue to speak about these happenings as much as they affect me and everyone around me. Well, I mean, you're, you're certainly taking, fearlessly taking on a very important issue, which is the fairness and the credibility of the last election. I mean, where does this fearlessness come from? Is it the fact that you don't have to be there in Nigeria when it all erupts? Because of course you are in London at the moment. Or, you know, or, or is it the background from which you come? Because I mean, both your, your parents are human rights activists and they've taken on the Nigerian state quite fearlessly. Yeah. No, absolutely not. And I knew, <laughs> I knew that was going to come up when you announced that uh, I, I was doing this uh, uh, from London. I knew that was going to come up. But um, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've, like I said earlier on, this is not the first time. It's not the second time. It's not the third time. I've released tons and tons of records that are very confrontational, um, you know, similarly confrontational. And I was on ground. <laughs> I'm always on ground uh, when I release these records. And, you know, it's, it's not to say that um, you know, I'm running anywhere. Absolutely not. And, you know, everyone knows where to find me if anyone wants to find me. But I, I have no reason to fear anything. And I always say this when people ask me, oh, how do you do these things, you know, without any fear of consequences or whatever. And to me, it's the kind of life that we're living. Um, and this is the same answer I always give. The kind of life that we're living already is one in which we're... we're more or less fading away already. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not a meaningful life, what we have in Nigeria as a country. What, it's, not, it's absolutely not a meaningful life. And what's the worst that could happen? You know, is it death? I don't fear death. You know, it, you know what, what possibly could happen? Um, and I would rather go down fighting for a just cause. I would rather be remembered as someone that lived a life that was meaningful rather than someone that, for example, was walking down the road and got run over by a downfall because he was driving recklessly or someone that uh, got a, 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 a heart disease and could not save himself because there are no hospitals uh, capable of saving him in Nigeria. You know, so I'll prefer, <laughs> I'll prefer to go down in, in this type of, of way. Um, like I said, to me, it's a more meaningful life. 
Well, that's a very profound statement that you've made. And, and uh, beyond your own personal safety, are you concerned about how the Nigerian authorities might react to this, your latest work? Because, I mean, your, as I said, your big hit of 2018, This Is Nigeria, was banned from the airwaves because the National Broadcasting Commission thought it was vulgar and unfit for broadcast. What do you think is likely to be the fate of this latest track, Ryakubu, which has already gone viral. Yeah, I mean, it'll probably be a similar reaction, um, you know, but at the end of the day, it would be too late, just like it was in the This Is Nigeria uh, scenario. The song and video have already gone viral, like you said. The message, <clears throat> excuse me, the message has been received. Um, Everyone resonates with the message already. So regardless of whatever ban, whatever reaction might come um, from the government or the ruling party, I, I could care less. <laughs> I could care less at this point. Right. Well, I mean, um, obviously, <coughs> obviously, we, we have to find a way in this country to move forward. After what seems to be the yawning divide created by this election, I mean, we've seen it along the lines of politics, religion, ethnicity. How do you think that we can build a bridge across it? I think we have to look beyond... When I say we, I mean the ordinary citizens. We have to look beyond all these differences, all these things that the ruling party always capitalizes on and weaponizes against us. We have to look beyond these things, things like tribe, religion. These are differences. Everyone is entitled to have their, di their differences, but these things don't define us. At the end of the day, we're all Nigerian. I, when I look at my fellow Nigerian, I don't see their tribe. I don't see anything else but another Nigerian. And going into these elections, going to cast my vote, I was looking for competence. I was looking for who would do the job. Who, who do I think is capable of doing the job? I wasn't looking at, oh, who is from my tribe? And that's why it, it was really, really, really infuriating when I was getting a lot of these messages and people sort of attacking me and saying, uh, uh, you know, throwing around all these uh, slogans, these slogans just fueling bigotry uh uh stuff like oh yoruba ronu or <laughs> you know it, it just didn't make any sense to me because this is not a war of tribes this has absolutely nothing to do with your tribe or your religion this is about competence and with everything that we suffer as a country with all the problems that we're facing it is so sad that in 2023 so many people allowed that tribal sentiment to get to them. And they went to vote based on tribe. And, oh, man, it was, it was just so sad to see. And, you know, like I said earlier, on, the only way we can move past all this is to really, really overlook all these sentiments and just look at competence. Because if we do not have competent politicians, we will remain where we are as a country. And on that note, a uh, very powerful note, I want to thank you very much indeed, uh, Fals, for joining us there from London. Fallerin Falano, better known as Fals, has just released a new politically charged song, uh, released with himself and Vector, titled Yakubu. Thank you very much indeed, Files, for joining us.